Dr. Kurt's dad, do we know who else is uh, joining us or not joining us? Uh, Jim and Damon and Kirby have all given their list. Uh, Katie would be the only one who would have to submit yet. Okay. Is it just the three of us right now? Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, I see it. Uh, I just wanted to go over with you, David. I don't know what the plans are in the future yet with any sell, sales or anything, but what I was going to suggest, if you have any time, if you want to start going through the crates and all comics that are valued under $5, set them, just crate them up. And uh, I'd like to do a dollar comic book sale for the whole club. So I like everybody in the group. So it's like, why not give them a good deal? And okay. that's a suggestion, but. Yeah, I had also uh, been considering um, doing, if and when the, t the time comes that we can actually put stuff out for sale, to do a similar thing and just let com people come in and make some sort of deal like this many comics for this price or whatever when you pick out of those bins and just, you know, see, yeah. see how that works. Yeah. So just wanted to put that out there to you. So I'm good with anything like that. Um, yeah, I was, uh, and, and I'll have to talk to Kurt about it too, but, um, I'd also was considering doing some sort of sale on things that we have lingering around here to, to still get rid of, um, and just kind of giving people from the club kind of the first crack at, uh, picking anything up. Yep. Yep. No problem. Yeah. Any other new news? <laughs> What happened with Free Comic Book Day? Did they say anything? I didn't see anything anywhere. I'm guessing just ultimately delayed. And then this once they get going and do it like in Ju July or something. Yeah, I haven't actually seen it either. It'd be nice to know since we had ordered, you know, <laughs> all the free comic books that we, we didn't get it. They didn't ship it out. Sometimes they ship that out well in advance, but we hadn't gotten it yet. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they're not doing some little things for stuff at all it's like it's like just everything is all stalled and quit and it's like okay well, this is your opportunity to set up little deals with all your regular customers Demon. <laughs> yeah so that, that's my thought is uh um no it, it, as, far as, as far as the stuff that we've got that's kind of my thought though is um just give everybody in the club an opportunity to come through and look through it um, and see what they want, kind of work out prices that way. We still have um, a number of books set aside from, uh, from when we let people go through uh, before, and we've got stuff sitting under here uh, <laughs> put aside for, um, for whoever picked out uh, comics when we pulled out all the crates and covered the tables and had them go through. Uh, so we have a number of those left as well. Uh, yeah. that uh, I would still like to, and and we can discuss that too. Um, if it, we can look through them and see if there's anything uh, real valuable, or if it's a uh, smaller amount, you know, yeah. dollar amount stuff, and uh, kind of make some deal just to get it in everybody's hands and and out of here. Yep. Otherwise, it's just gonna end up stored on my side too. So. <laughs> It's nice to have all the stuff, but I hate watching it get damaged too. So. Yeah. Um, somebody's crying to be let in. Oh, that is just cat. I thought it was our cat. <laughs> so thought it was our cat. 
Come on. Damon, hello. How's everyone doing? We're good. <laughs> yeah, Damon, I went ahead with that uh the ultimate collection, the black and white ones for the turtle. Uh, ultimate edition, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find the works because I looked at comparison videos and even though the black and white is the original, I'd rather yeah. have the colored, but the As the ones I'll be talking about today uh, are the colored versions, the first three issues and what they're just calling the first graphic novel. Um, but yeah, I, based on price and I'm, I'm cool with the black and white ones, so I went with that. So. <laughs> Then I can color them myself. <laughs> Aren't those in the ones that Damon was talking about? He's got the IDW ones, right? Yeah, I got like, the ongoing series that's going on right now. Okay, that's just IDW in the hardcover with the binding that's like the sword. Right, he's talking about the... Um, going back to 1984. Yep, all right. I see, because I heard something that I was... A couple issues we tying on the comic book club, and they were talking about some turtle thing coming up too, some big anniversary novel or something coming up. Oh yeah, um, that they're pairing up again. Like, is it like a lost story? Oh, or yeah. something? the one that they're starting. Yeah, where they're gonna go to Ronin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's from the older days too. So. But it's future, according to them, on the new one. So. Yeah, with it being a turtles, with it being a turtles heavy. Uh, oh boy! <laughs> nice. Way, finally, everybody gets to see what Shelly looks like. <laughs> <laughs> um. So with the uh, with the, t <laughs> it's very hard to keep a straight face. Um. With the turtles, since. Myself, Damon, and Kirby all have turtle stuff on the first round. We're going to go through our turtles, and then David will pick up with you on the second round. And you have Generation 1 and 2. Do you Are you talking about those two separate rounds? No, nope, all, all together, um, yeah. and, and I'll explain why. I, I read them um, not the, the first series and then the second issues, but I read them chronologically as they take place in the story. Uh, okay. Okay. So you changed my order then? I'm doing turtles first? Yeah, I'll, I'll give the order once uh, once it's all, once, well, we're, never, once never, we're in that mode. I never pay attention to the comic order. I just pay attention to the person order. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let. I just assume, oh, always assume that my comic order is the way I give it to you. Usually it is, but because we all, all like three of us said turtles, I'm like, all right, we're going to turtle it out right away. It's Turtle time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. Turtle power. I suppose since we're sitting here, I could do an unboxing today. Oh. Yeah, my turtles just came today from Amazon, too. I think it's since I have I don't know what this could be, but it's in a really big turtles. box. Okay, so by unboxing, you're just talking about taking it out of the shipping box, or are you talking about <laughs> taking it out of the Probably package? Both. Probably both. <laughs> Because I don't think it really counts, uh, just Ooh. you know, the Amazon box. Free air. <laughs> Is that that good China air? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Directly from Huan. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? I wonder what this could be. <sighs> Baby Yoda! <laughs> no, no, that's the child. Yes, that's the child. <laughs> I don't like that name. <laughs> it's not baby. It's not Yoda's child. <laughs> oh, Anthony's got his out. I know my wife desperately wants one. I'm trying to find a good one somewhere. This is, this is a good one. He's yeah. Cool. This one looks the way it should look. And that's, you get the same one as, that's the same one as mine, right? Yeah, it yeah. comes in a little carrier. Yeah. I, I ripped it out really quick, so I forgot what it looked like, what it what? came in. But yeah, this this one was uh, I got mine Entertainment Earth. You can get them everywhere, but I'm, I think mine was like twenty five or thirty, and it's, yeah, it's, it's Amazon. Almost, it's almost life size. 
I think it's only like an inch shorter than what he technically really is. Yeah. Uh, uh, so maybe yeah. the size that he was like 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's a pretty good one. Um, I was kind of a stickler when it came to like trying to get one that was pretty close to a, a you know, the correct scale, and this one's pretty accurate. So some of them are really ugly. No, no, no. Yeah. You'd be on a camera. We're yeah, it's like they got that Deadpool character, and he's holding that really ugly soft one, and I just don't know why you'd want to waste your money on that. Let's get something that looks like the character. But, uh, he's going to be all over the place Memorial Weekend getting pictures taken. <laughs> you know, I just saw that for the first time, Darth Vader is no longer the most popular Star Wars character. And I didn't read the article, so I didn't see who is, but I have some suspicions. I didn't know what Darth Vader was the most popular character. <laughs> I figured Chewbacca or something like that. Or Yoda and Darth Vader. Boba Fett. Too. So did, any, did anybody hear the, the news that they're bringing Boba Fett back for Mandalorian Season 2? If you believe that, Lee. I doubt well, it. Some Maybe. people thought that he was already in Season 1, so... That's right. Well, no, I mean... I believe he's coming back, but I don't think that that leak came from Disney. I think that's just something someone made up because Disney is so tight-lipped when it comes to Star Wars stuff. They don't let anything out. There's no way, you know, this far in advance they'd say, oh, yeah, Boba Fett is going to be in season two. We know Ahsoka Tano is going to be in it. True. God, you're such a downer, David. <laughs> well, I'm the one that first told everybody here that that was Boba Fett in season one. So if anyone should be the most excited, it should be me. Um, you have to excuse me. I just got buzzed that my pizza yeah. delivery is here. So, um, oh, here it comes. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Curbside pickup. All right. There we go. Thank you. All right. What did I miss? Uh, the tip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No tip. They I paid online. All different guys. He showed up over half an hour, uh, so no pay. Corona. Uh, yeah. Um, but it's like the Mandalorian was all based because everybody was so into Boba Fett, and then the Mandalorian came out, and everybody's saying bad shit about Boba Fett, and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> but Mandalorian's based where, again? Right, it's like what five years after Return of the Jedi, yeah, or oh, between six and seven, yep, right. So, Boba Fett's still alive. Well, well if, if, if you're basing solely on the movies, which a lot of people do, um, then you would think that he's not. So, uh, it, oh, it, really dep it, it depends on what you're looking at because I don't, I don't know if uh. <laughs> Oh, where did he get killed? He got swallowed up in the Sarlacc pit and returned to Jabba's palace. Yeah, but everybody cuts their way out of creature's stomachs. <laughs> well, so there's, there's a lot of ways out of it, but um, on screen, that's the last we saw him. It was, it was left out there to be digested over a thousand years. Speaking of Ninja Turtles, have anyone seen the TMNT movie, the cartoon sequel, yep. the original? Yeah, that's I guess. the only one I haven't seen. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, maybe this is a mistake to say this, because April O'Neil in there is voiced by Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> oh, Sarah Michelle Geller, Geller, what's the prophecy girl hashtag? Is that some movie well, or something coming up in? Or? Well, I don't know anything about the hashtag, but related to Prophecy Girl, she posted a picture of her wearing the Prophecy Girl dress and jacket, which is from, oh, there's Sarah again in the background. Uh, he's He's got that so accessible. Uh, uh, the outfit she wore in the season one finale, and she wore that and posted a picture of it. It was just awesome seeing that. So I think it, it got a lot of people talking and buzzing about it, but it was simply her just in quarantine, put on the outfit, and <laughs> that's yeah. that likes. Yeah, that's what I seen was something. 
that she was doing during quarantine. Just wasn't sure if it was something related to something from the past or something. That appeared, yeah, appeared. it was simply going through a closet because somebody said, oh, you should go through and cosplay as many Buffy outfits as you can. She goes, I think that's the only one I have. Who said that? Maybe the husband? Maybe. Anthony took the rest of my outfits. I know. <laughs> I'm wearing some of them underneath these clothes right now. Or at least under the desk or, you know, whatever you got set up there. Yeah, I have a skirt underneath here. And... Okay. Wouldn't be the first time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, it just really made me uh, realize I made a mistake when going into quarantine that I should have had you know, Tammy's dress here because then I could have, you know, wore it around the house. And <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm pretty sure you've worn it more than she has. <laughs> Did you go with David to pick it out for him and you tested it on for him to see what she'd look like? <laughs> I was simply just handed a dress. So. Wore, your, wore one of your wigs. <laughs> Now, there is an actual behind-the-scenes uh, thing that was put together. Um, <laughs> had, had some interviews and whatever, and, and one of the things that I mentioned right. in talking about this is we hadn't decided on that character being played by Anthony until the day of shooting. <laughs> and the trooper that I am, I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Awesome. <laughs> He's, an acting you role is an acting role. Yeah. <laughs> when you act, you gotta do whatever they ask. Oh, David, you got a kitty? You got a kitty? I got a tail. Yeah, that, that's what it. That's what it is. It's a that's kitty. A tail. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Was anyone having trouble trying to find their pull list at other places? I'm so pissed off. Don't get him started. What, is there anybody that's worth a shit? <laughs> I go to Midtown. I have 50 items in my cart. I'm doing great. Next day I know I look, I got one item in my fucking cart. Nice. Then I get pissed off. I keep. I do it again. I get another 40-some items. Goes to zero. I'm like, screw this shit. So then I go to the other one. The OCDC, BCD, whatever the fuck. <laughs> DCBS. Go on theirs, and I can't find half the shit I want to find. It's like, can't there anybody just be a basic thing? Here's your fucking monthly preview shit. Here's the new shit coming. Pick what you want and fucking put it on your list. And give me a tiny little description. I don't want to click on the fucking thing every time I want to look at a description. Then the description is two sentences is long. But I open up the previews catalog, and they give you a nice paragraph or two explaining what the hell the thing's about. It's like, I don't know. I'm so frustrated with this shit. It's just... It's like, thanks. Thanks for turning a person that started reading comics, brand new comics again, back to a guy that's probably never going to buy anything that's 10 years old. Come on, David. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> fucking idiots. And why couldn't you do this in the first place? Apparently Midtown supplies suppliers and shit, so does DCBS. So why, why couldn't you just get it through there instead of Diamond to start with? It's like, didn't they used to supply suppliers or did they just start supplying suppliers? No, it's on the website. They have the supplier link that was there. It, I don't know. Without looking into it, I, I don't know. I mean, because I don't know if Diamond's way cheaper or what, but hell, if they're going to send all everything bagged and boarded right to the shop for the customers, it's like, that would be nice. And then... <laughs> Seems like they're giving way better deals than what Diamond ever gave or anything with the extra percentage off. And buy a certain amount of things, you get this and that. So, yeah, well, th there were certain things that uh, I, I would have done differently too had everything been up to me. Because so. I like that they give you all the, fuck, the cover options and shit, but that just really bummed me out because I spent like four freaking hours and that. <laughs> My list just disappears. I'm not writing the shit down, so. <laughs> I just can't find any of my shit. You know, like, for instance, right now I'm, I'm on Midtown because DCVS doesn't have anything from my May poll list. I'm too late for them. So I'm trying to get all my May titles on Midtown and, like, Star Wars Bounty Hunters. I can purchase 
issues one and two or five. I need, you know, four, which was supposed to come out May 6th, you know. Well, when those, when those actually come out, they'll be available to you to add onto that card. So if they're not on the list right now, it's because you missed the window, obviously. But once it actually comes out, then they pop up back in there. So it, it basically doesn't allow you to pre-order books that aren't available to be pre-ordered anymore. But once the actual issue comes out, like Bounty Hunters number four, when that actually does come out, then a week leading up to it, it'll pop up on the on the order on the normal site. So. And it's going to be the price it originally was, or it's going to be the new upgraded price when it's higher a week later after it comes it'll, out? It'll, it'll be the regular discounted price, but in order to get a pre-order guarantee, right now all the stuff that's for June, the June catalog, I should say, is uh, is if you pre-order now, you get that at uh, 35% off, up to 35% discount. But once it comes out, then it's at like a 15% discount. So if you pre-order it, you get the biggest discount. If you pull list it, then you get their normal discount. Now, I was curious too, because Anthony, you said to me last week that my X-Ray Robot 1 through 4 is coming. 1 through 3. Yeah, 4 is in the catalog that you said isn't being shipped. 1 through 3 will be, well, 1 has already come out, so 2 and 3 will be at Crimson. Right. Okay, so I'm not getting number 4. Number 4, uh, those orders were all canceled on store yeah. level for Crimson. Last week you said, yeah. <laughs> What's that? that? That one I definitely got to find because that's one I definitely want. Well, I need to order something. <laughs> I'd say it'll the be rest ready. of my shit I can't. I still can't figure out what's what is on my list and what I'll have anymore. In fact, number four, you should still be able to pre-order because those pre-orders got pushed back. That was, that was one I kept putting in my thing before it disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you should still be able to do an actual pre-order for X-Ray Robot number four. Yeah. Kirby, about your Midtown, did you did you fill out an account to start with and then add to your cart, or were you just adding to your cart? I started my account first, and then I started adding to it. That's so weird. Then. What's the difference between add to pull list or pre-order? So when you do the pre-order on Midtown, that is the is you're paying up front two months in advance for that month. You're getting the highest discount. You are locked in. You can't subtract those titles. You're paying shipping and the book price all at one time in advance. When you do the pull list option, you are not committing to any of those items. So if you forget to look at what's coming, uh, so let's say you pre you pull list Bounty Hunters and your your Joe Hill series and your you know your Swamp Thing. You pull list those series. If there's one issue of each of those titles coming out in that coming week, it'll show you, hey, here's what's going to be in your next shipment. You can go to that list and just be like, eh, I don't really care about Swamp Thing anymore. You can just take that off. They won't ship it. And you could be like, oh, I want to get Bounty Hunters number four that I didn't get. You can add and subtract anything without any commitments. And so if you pull list an item, if, if you're doing the pre-order system, basically don't pull list any items. If you don't want to pay up front uh, in advance and all that stuff, then you definitely want to pull list an item. Uh, the books I've looked at don't give you the option. You can either it, add, you know, it looks like it just- Yeah, I thought it was just meaning that if you put it on your pull list, you'd get the ongoing run. because. Those were all the ones I've seen pull list ones were ones I had ongoing. Yeah, and you will get that. They'll always pull cover A for you. And um, and then going into that week, you have the choice of being like, you know what, this issue, I didn't care about the last two. I'm just going to delete this one. They won't send it to you. There's zero commitment. But when you do the pre-order thing, you are locked in because you're paying in advance. And, and that's why they're giving you the really deep discount because you're committing to – buying all that stuff immediately so 
Right. Like, it must be nice to be big enough that you get such big discounts that you can give, uh, you know, customers the same discount that we had as a store. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was curious how that worked, if you got a better deal through Midtown or not. And then one guy, like the comic book club, I think it was, or someone was talking, isn't DCBS East Coast and Midwest West Coast? DCBS is out of uh, just outside of T Memphis, Tennessee. So they were saying one was East Coast, one was West Coast on the comic book podcast. Yeah, I had heard that too. Yeah, because Midwest is New York. Um, so yeah, I think one they're West each kind of taking Coast. a portion. So maybe not where they're located, but what territories they're they're covering. Yeah. And when it came down to uh, the pre-order purchasing, at first, even though I was a little hesitant about paying for the entire, you know, my entire catalog all at once, including shipping, uh, when I did the calculations, I technically get a free weeks of comics based on all of the discounts that add up. So based on what they would have been, uh, by by pre by buying all of it at once, I basically get buy three weeks, get one free. Yeah, I got no problem paying ahead of time for shit as long as I get it. So what if I now say, guys, I was just kidding. We're staying in business. We're we're still putting in your orders. And I would ask if I can get my thirty five percent off discount. Megan <laughs> board included. I'm just starting, and this shit sucks. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I, honestly, a lot of a lot of the decision with us closing came from just the frustration of what's going on right now and the information not coming and, um, you know, not not telling retailers when stuff's coming, how it's going to work, completely leaving us in the dark about all this stuff. And then you sit there and you work on your orders and you go through this painstaking process to go through and put everybody's order in. And then they turn around and tell you, well, half the stuff that you just ordered was dropped. Now you got to go through and do the, your order again. Um, and then the stuff with the closing or, oh, well, we can't tell you what's canceled. We can't tell you what's still coming. We can't tell you what we're charging you for or not charging you for. Um, that That's pretty much how everything's been running right now. Just we can't tell you anything. I mean, was there a year where all of a sudden they said, okay, you can only buy from Diamond or something? Or No, I mean, that's pretty much how it's worked. Is Diamond is the retailer. Well, I get that, but Paul had about 15 different retailers. He didn't sit there and just have Diamond. He had well, they're used the, to, they're every used independent to distributor he ordered from himself, a uh, lot, Top Cow, Dark Horse, all that he ordered from himself. He did have diamond boxes and stuff that he'd get in and stuff for some of the basics. But I mean, he had every special cover, everything that was hard to get for anybody. Well, I, I, to have just, a lot of different uh, places. Diamond wasn't the only distributor. Diamond okay. fully started buying up the other distributors um, and people. That's what know, I was curious about if something happened. He used to have Capital City. It was right in Madison. Yeah, Capital Kansas. City was one, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, those, those are all done. Diamond became the only one. They, they had this big legal thing because people were trying to say it's a monopoly, which it is, but, um, they get by on a technicality because comic books are considered books and Diamond is not the only book distributor. Therefore, they are not a monopoly. <laughs> yeah. I love loopholes. Yeah. Always oh, someone's start doing some bullshit so yeah they they screwed us like about the last thing i told them when i got off the phone my second to last phone call with them is you know i let them know that they screwed us over one last time yeah that was yeah. a pen, penultimate phone call yes <laughs> penultimate phone call oh, so, pro uh, i'll probably end up calling them again at some point because technically we're still we're still on there. I we can't uh, cancel our account or anything until this whole thing is is done and we have everything that we're getting. Um, so technically, if we wanted to change our minds and keep going and stuff like that, we could. 
but I'm just so fed up with, with them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes no sense. It's like Stanley and all them guys fought for how many years to get shit right, get shit going right, and then all of a sudden some company decides they're going to decide how they distribute some on it someone else's shit when they're not producing shit themselves. So it's like, I don't see how the comic book industry ain't fighting back against that, them if they're pulling shit like that. And it's like, you would think all the artists and writers would. Put well, you know, they have those exclusive deals with, with diamond, you know, and that, that was, that's what killed the, the remaining places, the places that diamond didn't buy closed because Diamond made exclusive deals with all the big names, Marvel, DC, uh, Image, Dark Horse. Um, they were all signing exclusive uh, distribution deals with Diamond. So yeah. the last few places that were around went out of business because, you know, if you can't distribute those, I mean, there just was no money in it. There was, there was nothing left to do. Um, and... But- Kevin Smith building an empire on selling his stuff online. <laughs> like, well, I, I'm wondering, you know, just how many people are going, well, maybe we shouldn't have done that now, finally. Oh, yeah, exactly. So after, after all these years of, of doing the, um, doing this deal with, with Diamond, to now have Diamond being put in uh, a position of power where they can halt the whole industry just I mean, they absolutely can't be in a position of power anymore. There had to be a time period for any type of stiff stimulation because if DC pulled out, they'd be one of the first two to sign the big forms. And if they, they can pull out, that means Marvel, everybody else could pull out if they wanted to. I well, they say. probably haven't like renegotiated any kind of deals. Oh, yeah. Katie joining us. Uh, they probably haven't renegotiated any of those deals just because there's no other distribution company anymore to to go through. No. We've got now these they just created this. They just went through and created this so that they have a way to distribute other than Diamond. Um, those weren't these these are comic book stores. They weren't uh, distribution companies. Um, so this is this is brand new for them. Which was another thing where it's like, how is this going to work? They have not done this before. It's being rushed together. Um, so I, I don't know. You know, it'd be interesting to uh, to find out how smoothly that whole thing ran with uh, getting getting the DC stuff out. I had it go pretty smooth because it was quick. <laughs> they did that shit with in less than a week. Oh. It's like we had all this come out and then DC instantly dropped that week. Um, but, but again, there too, the, the problem is there's a number of comic book stores that weren't able to be open. They weren't able to get that stuff. Um, so they're still waiting for, uh, for it to come through diamond anyways, because yeah. all the DC stuff was still going to go through diamond um, you know, so if, uh, if a place opted not to get it through one of those other two places, they would still end up getting it through diamond eventually when diamond, uh, rolls them out. Uh, yeah, such fun. It, it would be nice to, uh, to have some other distributor come along now, you know, at least one other distributor it is a lot easier when you don't have a bunch of different places that you have to order from because then you're trying to keep all that stuff straight um but it would be nice if there was at least one other distributor that you had options um where uh and 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 that would be the best thing is if you have options so you're not having just exclusive oh we have to go through diamond to get our Marvel books or we have to go through diamond to get our DC books or, or whatever. Um, it would be nice to go, well, we can choose to either get through diamond or through, you know, this, you know, distributor X, you know, whatever it is. Um, just, to, just to be able to have that. And then diamond would have to be competitive. 
which they're they're not because they don't have to be. You know, they don't have to take care of retailers because retailers have no option but to go through them. Um, so they don't have to, you know, when Hello, we guys. Problems, Hello. When we had problems, you know, we would we would contact our sales rep and we the guy wouldn't even get back to us. We didn't know if things were being taken care of or not. You know, they have like the worst customer service. Uh, now, supposedly the worst customer service in the world, number one worst customer service is Comcast. I think that's only because there aren't enough people taking those polls that are comic book retailers to, uh, to <laughs> Diamond up there. But Diamond is horrible with customer service. Um, so it's... It, it would be wonderful to have another option, you know, so that Diamond would be forced to actually have to take care of um, the retailers and right. the customers are taken care of. It's like the retailers should have been saying this five years ago. They should have been starting to bring Diamond's problems out and letting us know we didn't hear nothing about diamonds issues until about two, three weeks ago. And now I hear just different comic book distributors complaining about them. And it's like, why wasn't anybody shouting out beforehand? There, was, just, there were, there were a number of people. <laughs> it's like, no one told me shit. Um, yeah, we, we knew about problems with diamond, um, before we even opened. <laughs> um, but but there's no option. I mean, we, we wanted to have a comic book store, you know, so um, you know that's that's what we had to do. We had to... Yeah, you got to have someone for the new releases. So now I'm choosing to not deal with Diamond, and therefore I'm choosing to no longer have a comic book store because that's that's how it works. But wait, there's these new distributors now. I see a group of people, and I know there's a big. Door that used to be called Fleet Farm sitting in the middle of West End. It's empty. It has tons of room and areas to improve and store. And <laughs> I got a ton of <laughs> used. Become blocks. a Midwest Midwest <laughs> distributor. Uh, you know that would be something. Now would be a good time to do it. You know, if, if I had a way to come up with the funds for doing it, I think that that would be a great business to get into. Um, you know if. Cause, cause now there are so many people who are upset. There's publishers that are upset with, with diamonds. So if you had that's why you just a, need a real, a, a real option, you know, I guarantee think you this, give me a two month advancement on distribution. You give us the products two months ahead of time. We work on a basis of 15% payoff to get caught up and over a one or two year period, you set that up like that. I guarantee you a lot of distributors, if these issues are this bad, they would jump on. Oh my goodness, we can make ankle comics a reality. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So you already got Alterna that dropped out. You got connections with Alterna. So you... um, right, and, and I don't know. Um, I don't know if Peter would... Uh, would even be interested at this point in, in going through a distributor. Uh, I mean, he's better off doing it himself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got enough of a following and, and everything. People who want him are going to do that. Although I do think that um, going through a distributor who would actually take care of him as a publisher, uh, I think could be beneficial. Yeah, because it's that, nice. That, that's the problem. Himself, but if you have a few distributors together, then you can offer the discounts and break everybody in. So you need to build the inventory to go with it. So. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, they, they had a lot of problems with, with Diamond. Um, you know, they had a lot of problems with reorders. You know, the, the pre-order stuff, they could get, customers could get, stores could get that stuff. But, uh, a lot of times if you would put a reorder and it was an Alterna book, you wouldn't get it. So we did all of our reorders directly through Alterna anyways. Uh, 
Uh, frankly, I, I think if we were doing that, then uh, we probably should have just ordered everything through Alterna. Uh, I know that was one issue that Kurt had because Kurt was doing all the orders. Kurt didn't want to deal with, with multiple places. Um, and I, I, I think that that was a mistake. I think if, uh, yeah, it's a pain to have to deal with multiple places, but, um, but in doing so, you can get better deals. Our discount through Al Alterna directly as a retailer um, was a lot better of a discount than, uh, than it was through Diamond. Oh, yeah. It's like if you're going directly through them, they're only dealing with you. If you're going through Diamond and you, then they got to cut you twice. And it's like, so it just keeps getting less and less the further you go out. So. And, and, and talking the business ends of things. Um, so the way that things work with, with, with Diamond is it depends on how much you're buying. And about every three months or so, they relook at what you're buying from these different publishers. And that your discounts, um, basically starting off, um, you're kind of like a 35% discount across the board. Everything that you're getting through Diamond is 35%. Uh, they have different discounts. You know, Marvel's got their own discount. DC's got their own discount. Star Wars has their own discount. Image has their own discount. Most uh, most places don't. So it's basically Diamond's discount, um, which is typically going to be like your your 35%. Um, so it's the more you more the, the more you order of something, say over a three month period. Uh, we order a ton of uh, Marvel, you know, then our discount might change. It might go to like a, uh, you know, we might have like a 50% discount on Marvel. Uh, maybe we had a 45% discount on DC, you know, and, and whatever, depending on how our sales were, how much we were ordering from those companies. Now you get the bigger stores, you know, you get Midtown who's ordering uh, because they've got, the store, but they're also, they're doing all of their internet sales and they're a big place that's been around for many, many years. A lot of people know them. Probably the first place that a lot of you thought of when you were uh, deciding to, to put in orders uh, online. And uh, so they very high volume orders. So their discounts are, are a lot greater than what a small comic book store is going to be. Yeah. By a little guy never makes it. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's what tends to happen. Um so you got uh big, you know bigger stores like uh Collector's Edge, Lost World of Wonders, you know, they probably got these decent discounts. Um they would also be able to afford the extra cost of doing the Tuesday deliveries versus the Wednesday deliveries so that they had their stuff ready to go Wednesday. Whereas, you know, we're, we're getting ourselves on a good week. We were getting our stuff, you know, at a decent time and having it ready uh, around opening time. But more often than not, we'd be waiting for UPS to show up and, um, you know, waiting on books. And there were times that we didn't, that they didn't show up at all on Wednesday and we had our new comic book uh, Thursdays. I know some of the new things that I heard people talking about is like two or three day delivery now during the week. Different stuff's getting shipped on different days or something. Hmm. No one was talking about it. Well, that with that the new companies, they're this. gonna do it on Tuesday. Yeah, I heard. I thought it was Tuesday, Wednesday, and possibly something else. Hmm. Um, and then, of course, you you know, going back to Alterna, uh, you know, I, I don't think that they're working on a schedule where they're shipping the stuff out. Um, so it gets there right at Wednesday, you know, they're probably shipping it. Um, frankly, I, I don't know if Peter cares if you wait until Wednesday. If, if you got it a little early, he probably didn't care if you put it out for sale on Monday, um, uh, or whatever you get the new stuff sell it you know I, I think he'd rather just i never understood that when people would get the shit ahead of time and they have to hold on to it for a day or two it's like, well that's what we always had to do with with diamond yeah uh, i know sometimes we get stuff a week early and and it would say on it you know uh not for sale until such and such a date and 
Diamond, believe it or not, does actually send people out to comic book stores. Um, the chances of somebody actually coming into ours were slim, but but they do. They actually would send some you know people out to various comic book stores across the country, and if they went in and they saw something that was for sale out on the racks before it was actually supposed to be released, you get into a lot of trouble for it. Oh, I know. I mean, it's they do. There's other companies too. With when I sold stuff for Wizards of the Coast and stuff, we'd get stuff ahead of time. But if you put it up on eBay for sale and you didn't say not shipping till this date, you could get in trouble for it. So back in like 2001, 2002, when Buffy season six was coming out on DVD, I was just browsing browsing the shelves at uh, Shopco, and it was one week before it was supposed to come out. And I see it sitting on the shelf and I'm looking around, I'm checking, you know, my sources. I'm like, this ain't supposed to come out till next Tuesday. So I grabbed two copies, uh, one for myself, one for a friend. And then I was getting all nervous when I had to go to the checkout thinking it wasn't going to be in the <laughs> system because somebody put it out on the shelf too early. And then they would, someone would come and be like, oh, we're not supposed to sell this. So I was just like, oh man, I'm like, I hope, and it rung up. And like, once I paid, I just like shot out of there because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's not they had the musical which they wouldn't re-air on tv it was a special event and i was just oh well, man that shop or walmart. my life well that shopco or walmart uh shopco shop okay. and now they're all shut down yeah, yep. so shut down. that's why uh, 19, 19 years later you went home bragged about it put it for sale put the second one on online for sale it was, yep. it was shut down over that it's just that with all the red tape and everything it took him 19 years to actually you know yep. get, get it all taken care of and shut them down yeah with all all the red tape they first went to jim and wondering if he took all the red tape he's um red hulk question mark uh, that, Again, that's okay. right jim's Again. coming to us uh today from the, the red light district <laughs> It looks like he's got Anthony. The Red Light District of Kewaskum. Yeah. That George Costan is a pitcher. Oh, yeah, there's some kind of unicorn <laughs> or something. Yeah. It's just a horse. <laughs> of course. It's just a horse. All right. The well, horse is a horse. Is a horse, of course, of course. Why don't you talk to a horse? Um, it is. You can't horse. see that very well. Yeah, it is a horse. <laughs> <laughs> if only Jason Alexander was riding it. Right from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Frankenfurter? Looked like Frankenfurter with his nylon stocking hands and stuff, kind of like bent over, <laughs> bent forward. Okay, it is uh, 4 o'clock. We know that Dr. Kurt's dad won't be joining us, so we do have everybody here. Uh, the only question I have out yet is, uh, Katie, do you have anything for the list at all? I do not. Okay. Thank you for asking. No problem. Okay, real quick, I want to put this out there too. Uh, there is a D&D thing going on after this, I'm sure Jim is aware of. So shut up and get off the line. <laughs> so um, I, I've been asked to uh, make sure that we, uh, you know, end, end this uh, abruptly, you know, at, at you know, when we're, when we're done so that people can get set up. The we're doing these online D&D sessions now. And so this uh, computer in this area that I'm sitting in right now needs to be used for that. The last uh, believe it or not, it actually yeah, takes longer to get ready online than it does in person. Yeah, and that, and that's that's kind of why they're they're all nervous about it. like what time are you getting done with the club? You know, you used to have when you had children when they turned eighteen, they got the hell out. <laughs> yeah, well. they only get their own damn basement to have their club. <laughs> tell tell David I'm going to talk about these two I forgot to put in the list. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <sighs> got my stack here. Ready to... Okay, um, I'll go through uh, the rundown of the list here. Uh, I'll kick it off with uh, Ninja Turtles graphic novel, Damon with IDW Ninja Turtles. We're going to skip David for this round to get to Kirby for his Turtle uh, Mutant Universe. Then Bloodbath 1 and 2, Archie Comics Super Special number 5, um, Superman and Batman Generations 1 and 2, Green Lantern versus Aliens, The Best of Betty's Diary, and then Kirby's going to take us home with Predator, Invaders from the Fourth Dimension, 
and then Species and Starship Troopers. Oh, Jesus Christ. I've got to start reading some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read a lot, but I only talk about what fits Just in the show. Do the usual and tell me when it's my turn. So, yep, okay. that is... Uh, and what's the sign-ons and sign-outs? So, it'll be myself, Damon, David, Kirby, Katie, Jim. Isn't Jim reviewing anything? Uh, bloodbath. Yes. That's oh. all the red, probably. <laughs> I wonder if I can, how long I can put my name in there, if I can just put the whole order in there as my name. <laughs> Maybe. Why doesn't the name change on mine? You can change it on her iPad. You have to manually change it. Well, I changed it on her iPad after the first week. And it always comes up as Shelly's iPad still, but it doesn't say that inside her iPad anymore. And I can't, I don't know how to change it on the screen because I'm using an iPad, not a computer. Well, I was able to when change my name. Hover near the bottom. When you hover near the bottom, do you see a uh, participants pop up? A what pop up? There's a list of icons that pops up and one of them is participants. Oh yeah. Oh part yeah. Ah, okay. Click on your name there and it'll rename will come up as an option. Okay. Cool. Now I just gotta rethink a name. <laughs> and I have the list as my name now, so everyone's got the order. Shelly's bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it because we're not under the call anymore. <laughs> Okay. Well, we technically are we are. We still are right now. Right now. But right now we're going to switch over. <laughs> or are we? Too much writing for me. <laughs> okay. I have hit record. I'm going to wait till David sits back down, and then we will kick it off. All right. Yeah, you know. Give her five minutes. She'll want back in. Okay. Here we go, everybody. Dudes and dudettes, Major League butt kicking is back in town. I'm Anthony. I'm Damon. I'm David. I'm Kirby. I'm Katie. And I'm Jim. Welcome to issue number 130 of the Crimson Cowl Comic Club Podcast. Is that even an hour? <laughs> What's that? Well, it was. It's been an hour? That was a fast one. Yeah, no, I bet that was short. that was uh that was a short one. I, I don't know uh, what are they gonna do over there in Cedarburg. We got a two hour time slot. They'll replay it twice. Play it twice. And they did just uh they did just release their their updated schedule. Yeah. So we are from the uh, nine to eleven slot on Sunday nights. Yeah. Um. If The Walking Dead can play their premiere episode. And do a Talking Dead, and then play Walking Dead again. You know, why can't we? Yeah. Now, now we to, it it uh, might be about two hours when you cut out uh, the the breaks in between segments. Although we only did two segments, <laughs> so that probably didn't reduce it. Um, no, it's only one hour of audio on on my side for the club. You know? So what do you mean in Cedarburg? What do they do? The Cedarburg. The radio, the public library radio, because uh, we're we're part of that network on Sunday nights and Tuesday. Nights. I, I don't think we're on Tuesday. Nights, so I think it's just well, they, they took the Tuesday off. Yeah, I think it's just Sundays now. Kirby, what are you doing? Uh, the cat's knocking my thing over. <laughs> I think as they've got more uh, more material to use, um, you know, we we jumped on earlier and we had two different nights. And now I think we're down to just one night so that they've got other things on different nights. So at least it's audio. I thought maybe they were doing the video one. No. <laughs> no, they do the, uh, the the audio over there for the club. And David, since you talked about a hard out and we finished early here, do you have a specific time? Um, 
case you wanted some more under the cowl or people. Oh, want- yeah, yeah, but you know, if we if we want to hang out for you know, well, well a bit half an hour or so. That's I figured you probably had a little more time yet, but well, I'm gonna sign out because Jim's probably got to get ready. And Your house is on fire. <laughs> He's he's got to d- go uh, take a blood bath. <laughs> Put your cat away. He's so gross. Cat is trash in the house. He likes the <laughs> make dinner and then be back for D and D. All right. Good. See you later, Jim. Have a good one. One of these weeks, what we'll have to do. Have a good one, guys. We'll have to hand a cat across, and then I'll have to grab it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll change colors as it goes across <laughs> um for our uh, video watchers here that aren't in the club uh that's the uh, new uh, logo for wendy's right it's just not colored that's right yep just got a color yet but yep i drew a, a 1940s betty cooper here in the style while watching some riverdale so sharing that for those people that are watching through the youtube the youtube <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Those kids and their YouTubes. I did do a uh, without photo reference. That last one was with photo reference, but this one I did without and just did it really quick and didn't spend a lot of time. It was maybe like 10 or 12 minutes or something, but I wanted to kind of test my memory skills on the many I times I and looked at Jughead, so I threw that one up there too. So was the photo reference for Betty actually uh, Riverdale? You were watching? Uh, Nope. I I used Uh, it from um, what I'll probably be talking about next week, the Archie's, uh, the first, Archie's first from the Dark Horse archives. Um, So, yeah, they had a couple of them along the bottom there. And so what's funny. Archie's first, and it's a book about which one of those characters was Archie's first. Yep. Was it Reggie? Betty, Veronica, or Jughead. You got to read to find out. Well, uh, like the other club was talking, and we missed out on the orgy episode. <laughs> they're saying they had that Archie writer on there, and they're talking about how they had someone wrote one that had all kinds of fornication in it. And <laughs> they pulled it from it, and they had Archie doing some s- suspicious things. Are you sure you didn't dream that? No, I didn't dream that. I just listened to it today. <laughs> what uh, HBO Max is for, right? Yep. It's it's like now that they got Riverdale, there's no reason they, they can't do it. There is cat hair everywhere. <laughs> I know. Jesus. <laughs> this is flying. Every time David moves, it just floats in there. <laughs> I'll, I'll I share spend it. half the club, you know, Pulling it off my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so share this one. If you needed to go wash it off. I'll share this one too. Uh, myself and some friends, um, Archie and friends, if you will. But I drew my friend Nikki and Steve and their family, and I kind of drew us in an Archie style. <laughs> Where's my vampire? Well, you said the the birthday was at the end of the month, so maybe somebody already made a vampire, but has to wait till somebody has a birthday. So, oh, my birthday now! <laughs> maybe you're talking about a certain drawing that I'm looking at. Here, I'll show you. Oh, wait, I have the iPad on the wrong side. You can't see it. Maybe if you look at the reflection of Supergirl poster, maybe you'll see it. Oh, I see it. <laughs> These are. It, it's really celebrate birthdays after seventy. I I was waiting for him to turn it over. So <laughs> snap a photo. <laughs> yep, yeah, there's a here's a slight preview on the on the glare and the reflection. There now you can pause that and make do with whatever you want. So yeah, you're being yes, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, hairy pain right now. Yeah, there's cat hair everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> I have a black table, but <laughs> it's white right now. <laughs> the cat just roll over it. Did you ever put that in the oven? 
No. The cat? No. <laughs> Stick the cat in the oven. He's gone. <laughs> that explains the hair all over the place. Because <laughs> you put a cat in the oven, that don't make it a biscuit. <laughs> One job. Stick. Made the dinner ahead of time, so you just have to stick it in the oven so you can feed my. Forgot all about it. Should have had Jim cook dinner. <laughs> well, he probably was. He was getting up and walking away. And... <laughs> Anthony, the glare. Jesus. What? Oh, yeah, you, you're bent. Had your head down. You're just the, the glare that was shining up. <laughs> Looked freshly waxed. Off the dome. I used some turtle wax, so. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure you got a wig sitting right there you could just slap on if it was, you know, getting, getting too bad. Uh, let's see. I'm sure there's a wig around here somewhere. Here's a wig. <laughs> oh my god. That scared me. Child. Oh, look at the double child. <laughs> Twins. Oh, yeah. Double twins. <laughs> it's <Aww. Eight> <laughs> um Kirby, I want to see the tag on yours to see if uh if it's like mine. Why don't you hand me yours? <laughs> wanna hand it? All right. Uh, all right. Um Okay, uh, yep, yep, made in China. Okay, here you go. <laughs> uh, pull string on them, too. <laughs> what does it say? May the swords be with you. <laughs> it's like he's, he's nice, the size and stuff, but. He's not going to sit well when I get him outside, probably. Yeah, I had, I had that same problem when I did that photo shoot by the tree there because I kind of just planted him there, and then I had to, you know. <laughs> That's what I liked about well, Funko Pop because it's got that nice flat base, but then you get well, the That's the problem with any child. You take them outside, they're just going to – they're not going to sit still. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them in the water, they drown. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them in the oven. There's cat hair all over. <laughs> Throwing out the baby with the bath water. The blood the, bath water. Kind of curious what it's going to look like Memorial Weekend because I want to go out by like Port Washington or Sheboygan out by Lake Michigan. I have a feeling they'll have stuff blocked off so a ton of people aren't down by the beach. We'll see. Down by the beach, a little rock lobster. Yeah. <laughs> Take them out to the lighthouse. Stick them on top of the lighthouse. Take them frog hunting. They'll have a limit on how many people can go over there. Everybody else is going to have to group together in a line. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have paddle boards. You got to keep your paddle boards so far apart. What time does our D and D start? Usually wrong. Well, pot potentially six, but it depends on uh, how long it takes them to get set up. Because uh, they're doing it kind of, kind of like what we're doing here. Everybody's on their own computer. They're not doing video, but they are doing audio between each other, and then they have. Uh, Everybody has their own chunk of land and all the characters, so they can keep moving them around. Well, they they have a map that uh, that they've got where it shows where everybody is and and everything else. Um, Since today was a very turtles heavy uh, day, did we all see that uh, the rotting costume? This is probably from like a long time ago already that the picture had surfaced, but one of the original turtle costumes that was just rotting. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, the mouth was just like peeling back and showing the teeth and you could see the full body. It's basically like a zombie turtle, but yeah, it, it's pretty creepy looking. Cool. Yeah, at first when you showed it, I thought it was one of the dinosaurs characters from that goofy TV show. <laughs> they both are from the Jim Henson Company. Yep. <laughs> well, my guess was that it was one of the turtles from the TV show version because they had 
kind of that that different look. Oh, sure, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Just market it like that. Zombie turtles. <laughs> Probably sell more for higher price now than what it was meant. What are you looking for? I'm just looking. Getting in trouble. No, I'm just looking. So, uh, Anthony's got all his comics ordered because he's an old pro at that stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Anthony. I thought about coming to his house and making him do mine. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, ordering with these other places, I, how has how that been as far as... Uh, um, well, it sucks like, like, can you order <laughs> say uh, um, I don't know how they've got their ordering set up but um, it, but because it's from a different store I assume that you can order everything you can order the Alterna stuff you can order DC and, and everything else I didn't see Alterna on anything that I went through yeah. I don't know if Alterna pulled all together already and then because there were so few comic book stores that dealt with Alterna, I, I don't even know if, uh, um, if if all these places dealt with them before. So that that could be part of the the problem there. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Alterna, like I'm pretty sure they have them all at Midtown Comics. Um, there may not have been stuff that popped up just because of you know that if they had any shipping delays on something, but. For instance, I, they have the Adventures of Mr. Crypt and Baron Rat number three when I just typed in Mr. Crypt. So Midtown does supply Alterna. Okay. You can get a near mint copy for a dollar twenty. <laughs> I should almost just have my iPad light the screen since it's always so dark for me over here. Just set my iPad down under it or just like hold it. Yeah, I was wondering if you moved or changed your lighting because the first couple of weeks I thought you were brighter. Is that right? Yeah. Playing around with yeah. the lighting. Yeah, I'm more so just kind of looking at like what kind of backgrounds to show off, but lighting. Yeah, I, I just assumed you had romantic settings set for the George Costanza picture. So. Yeah, I have a standalone uh, lighting fixture, uh, like a lamp type of. Not like a regular lamp. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a desk lamp with a twisty oh. type of thing, but it's a full standing one. And uh, of course, when moving it, it fell. And then even though I have carpet, it fell. It hit one hard edge and then it just shattered. It just so, had to land on a carpet tack and yeah. busted it. That's the problem with those big leg lamps. They're so fragile. Christmas story, you know, the lady. Yeah. Oh, they're fragile. They. <laughs> Their minds are fragile. They. It's fine as long as you're not out of glue. You can just put it back together. <laughs> yeah, going back to what David was saying, um, but yeah, the Alterna is at Midtown, and you know they are slowly rolling out those DC releases. So, uh, so I have a package that's shipped right now that has Flash number seven fifty three, which is the brand new issue and then there was a couple things by the way kirby the uh 3d madman i do that'll be part of there because i ordered the next so one. No one i'll swing into the shop yeah i ordered an extra one for myself so i can cut up the back and make that 3d cube and then i have one for you as well then yeah you can bring it with my signed copy of x-ray robot number two yeah, and, uh, I want all four signed. <laughs> I could probably do that because maybe I'm once again in the other issues. Ooh, Ooh teaser with his, with his new little logo, <laughs> Silver Surfer logo that he's going to start drawing. Um, speaking of X-ray Robot, uh, All Red just set up a new uh, online shop. Normally, a lot of the T-shirts that I wear on here and show off are from a uh, T Public store, but he had just switched over to Threadless, which I know a lot of people use. They have a Threadless account. Basically just taking your images and then you can get it on cups and you know mugs and 
bath mats and all that kind of stuff. So he moved over there. You can get like skateboards, uh, um, shoes, and they have an x-ray robot t-shirt right now. Um, but he said they're going to keep adding more stuff. So I'm going to wait until he, uh, add some more things to do in order but uh i'm assuming he's going to take my image and blow it up uh like a like a shower curtain probably so you can buy a shower curtain with my face on it so or a flashlight <laughs> <laughs> i'll i'll yeah let me see he'll if be, he wants, he'll uh, be lighting himself with the flashlight that he got well, not a flashlight. his image on it not a flashlight a flashlight oh a flashlight <laughs> let, yeah let me tweet all red real quick and see if he's going to get into the flashlight business so. i am amazed kevin smith he talked about doing some of those i'm amazed he never did any flashlights <laughs> um i'm gonna just start going through comics until i find you know something that looks like me and i'm gonna say hey they drew me into this comic <laughs> I'm sure that'll happen because I, I had that a couple times with some friends and like relatives and stuff. I've taken a picture and just being like, this is you, like this is drawn exactly like you are. So everybody be on the hunt for a, a David appearance. Back when I was in the army, they drew me to uh, X-Men number one. Uh, and uh, yeah, see, I'm one of the soldiers in there. And... <laughs> oh, David, here, I found you were drawn on the Superman TV show DVD set. That's yeah. you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The complete first season, 26 episodes. It was, uh, I was drawn, drawn in here as the original, uh, Iceman. <laughs> yeah, it's uncanny. X-Men. Oh, wait. Uh, well, Anthony, since you're also a, a Lemire fan, yes, on Kickstarter a lot. Did you see his new Kickstarter campaign for Cosmic Detective? I did, and that just reminded me. I forgot yeah, I was that was part of the thing. Yeah, I forgot about the curse words thing. I jumped right over it. Um, yeah, I I I will probably do the Cosmic De uh, Detective Kickstarter just because those are cool words together, and it's Chef Lemire and Matt Kent, I think, right? Yeah, Kent and Ruben. Yeah, so it's definitely a good lineup there. So, yeah, I haven't done it yet because I knew the Curse Words one was coming. So, in the Curse Words one, this will be a Under the Cowl exclusive um, if this is going to be put up, you know, whenever. But uh, it put up whenever. 2023, <laughs> maybe. Um, it's for the Curse Words omnibus, and it's like an 800 page omnibus for Curse Words. Um, but yeah, so even though I have all the single issues for that one, they have a, a giant omnibus and all people are going, all backers, it, it got like over 200% in one day. It is like soup, like the most successful thing that Ryan Brown has done for Kickstarters because he's done those. Um, but he's talking about how everybody's going to get a PDF version. So he says, so then you can put your omnibus on your shelf behind a glass case so nobody you know there's no human hands touching it anymore and you can read it break those seams or anything like that they are doing a bonus uh a bonus story for the kickstarter only that's not going to be presented anywhere else um but yeah it's uh i think maybe the first tier is like between 65 or 75 to get the physical omnibus which is a pretty good price for something uh because curse words, I want to say was twenty eight issues, so twenty eight, and then you think the tax, you know, it's probably going to be end up being like a hundred and twenty bucks if you bought those individual issues or seek them out and stuff. So you can get this uh, omnibus that's only going to be available through the Kickstarter. It's not going to be, uh, you know, released by Image Comics in the previews catalog down the road, it's only going to be a, a Kickstarter thing. So. so you're sure the omnibus, the only way to get the curse word omnibus is through Kickstarter. That's what they're saying. That's well, and, and sold. And then it will be on eBay and stuff. 
Well, that's not too bad. It's seventy five bucks, and this kicks. I'm looking at it right now, and this Kickstarter uh, is saying free shipping. Yep. Yeah, because uh, what they're actually doing, they're partnering up with uh, Challengers Comics that's in Chicago. Um, I know that's Kurt's favorite store every time I mention Challengers Comics, because wasn't that a name that you guys wanted? Well, yeah, because that that was a, a name, because that was our, uh, our real-life superhero uh, team name was the Challengers. So. so, yeah, they've been in business for, I think, 11 or 12 years or so. They have two stores in Chicago. I've been there for some autograph signings and things like that. And pretty good shop. I dig it. And then... Uh, they host a lot of Chicago based people for autograph signings and Ryan Brown, Ryan Brown being a local guy. So yeah, they're partnering up with them to do like the distributing and stuff like that. And yeah, they're going to ship that 800 page or so omnibus. For it's gonna be a hardcover? Yep. It's a hardcover. Right. That's gotta be the cheapest hardcover omnibus Damon owns. <laughs> Probably. Pretty good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal just across the board. And the tier I got, I got like, I don't know if it was like the 90. Pop one. <laughs> What's that? The top tier. No, the top tier was like $10,000 and it was something so weird. I think it was a fake one because I don't think they, and I, I forget, do you still have it up there? Yeah, I'm looking at it. What's they the just made what's it up. The Yeah, you know what? Dollars? We'll just throw it up there. Nobody's going to pay that much anyway. Uh oh, those are the no longer available. Hold on. Uh, ten thousand. Your very own wizard van. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, so they did a <laughs> yeah, touch a vehicle for under thirty thousand nowadays. I think they figured if anybody actually did do that, they'd probably just get like a you know like this Captain America <laughs> van. <or something. laughs> but uh, a year or two ago, I wanted to do it, but um and. David, you'll you'll appreciate this that I opted out from going to Challengers Comics on a Saturday for the the Wizard tour van that they were they literally got in a van and they drove across America and they did a a, a tour on their own dime and stuff and they had a whole painted van with their art on the side and stuff like that. It was a super awesome event and I I thought about going but I turned it down because I'm like you know what. I'm going to have to be at the Crimson Call that Saturday. We have a comic club and hang out and got to be with people. So, so yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, that's probably it. No, it was 100% it. Oh, it wasn't like, uh, well, we're busy doing, uh, you know, a, a wedding for uh, uh, Kitty Pride classes or something. No, nope, it was 100% like, all right, do I skip uh, Saturday at the Cowl and the club hosting? Uh, to go meet the people I've already met before, but it was still going to be a cool thing to be on that tour. But I decided, uh, no, even though it was a once in a lifetime tour, I figured, you know. And it 100% was not the week that your car had died. (laughs) Correct. It was legit, (laughs) legit a decision where I'm like, no, I'm going to be at the call instead. All right. Now you can hand me the money that uh, you paid me to say that. <laughs> hey, there's nothing coming out on this side here. <laughs> That's okay. There's nothing on this side either. <laughs> um, but yeah, going back to Cosmic uh, Detective. Um, yeah, I, I definitely will probably scoop that up just because of. I didn't. I didn't have time to go through like see what it all is, but it's Jeff Lemire, so. <laughs> Cool premise. Someone kills God and then got to have a detective to go and figure out how. Sold $10,000. <laughs> and the wizard van goes too. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but man, that Kickstarter is addictive. Since I've been on there, I've already... Yeah, it's a rabbit hole that you don't want to go down. I've already backed five. I got nine saved that I'm looking at. And that was just within the last two minutes. And they're I all start, top tier. I course, started out strong, but then it's like you're waiting forever. You forget that you got stuff coming, and then two years later, all of a sudden, something shows up on the door. Speaking of that, because, yeah, a lot of Kickstarters do do that. I've done many over the years, but, uh, yeah, you do have that where you paid for it, and then two years later it shows up. It's a nice surprise because you're like, oh, I forgot this yeah. is 
I've never been screwed over yet. Yeah, I haven't either. And uh, to going off of that, the curse words, all of the – they just have that one story to do, and they said, like, everything else is done, you know, because they're not writing and drawing 28 issues of a comic because that's already done. So they are guaranteeing how quick that Kickstarter is going to be turned around. Um, I think they, I think they dropped a month. I don't want to say it here because I forget what they said, but I think they did say, yep, this is when it's coming out. So. Yeah. A lot of them have been coming out a lot faster. I know like Shelly's vampire tarot that we backed, that's supposed to be coming this month. That wasn't that long ago that I backed that. And you've actually read the cursed words. Issue? I've read them all and own them all, and I have uh, been printed in the letters page a couple times. And it's a pretty good story. Yeah, it's uh, it it's it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of it hits you with some emotional moments too, but that premise is simply that uh, a wizard named Wizard was sent to Earth or America. I think it was Earth uh, specifically to destroy Earth, and he saw the people there and decided kind of like a silver surfer type of story and where he's just like it's like well i don't he's like these people are nice like why would i kill these people so he decided not to destroy the planet and then when his uh ruler decided that he started sending other people to go kill kill wizard and you know finish the job and stuff but it's very wacky very fun um like I said, it, it catches you with some, uh, you know, there's a lot of fantasy type elements. The art's just gorgeous when it comes to drawing. There's uh, the the whole world, H-O-L-E, the whole world, which is uh, where the bad guys are from. So you see a lot of creatures and monsters and demons and just, just messed up characters. It's just basically an artist being given, you know, he co-created it. So he's just drawing whatever the hell he wants and, you know, draw a guy with an the whole world in his hands. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, um, and, which is probably a joke in the series somewhere. I forget. If not, they missed out. But they can listen to this and put it into the bonus story. Um, but, yeah, uh, it, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, anyone else read Curse Words? I've read a few Curse Words. Uh, I think George Carlin has a list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, a lot of Curse Words. <laughs> You can say them on here, though, just not on television, right? Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, something I forgot to mention, too, with that Green Lantern Aliens one was Kyle Rayner has to use a gun for the first time and actually consider killing a species. Doesn't like killing stuff. But yeah, if you're into that and haven't read that. Now... I haven't read it, you know, but but I visualize, you know, this uh, Green Lantern getting killed on this world with these aliens and then the ring having to find a new owner. And, of course, there's nobody else on the planet, and it goes to an alien. Nope. <laughs> the ring falls off his hand, and that's that's the beginning of it, oh. where they find the dead dead green lantern and the ling ring laying there with his stomach all a hole in his stomach where the alien burst out <laughs> but the aliens did not take the ring they can't use the ring because after all that stuff with hal jordan and all that shit and it was just down to kyle rayner uh all the powers were dissipated and it was down to just kyle's ring right so even, they did it so there was just the the one ring yeah, because well, even in this one, Kyle picks up the ring from the lantern that got killed, and he has that ring on him. I can't remember if it was him or one of the other Green Lanterns, but none of them put it on or could use it because it's just basically dead power now. And the only ring that they could use was Kyle's, and then Kyle, of course, drops his ring throughout this. They have to go through all that shit and stuff, but yeah, his is the only ring that worked. And was that the the one ring that ruled them all, or yes, the one green ring that ruled all, them it all was yeah. What a volcano! <laughs> it was thrown into a pit of aliens, and <laughs> that sounds well, like it must be from a, an anniversary edition. I now I want a movie about a green ring thrown into a pit of aliens. That sounds dope. Let's make that. 
<laughs> but let's do like scary aliens from the alien franchise where they look so up. Let's do those kind of aliens, not like just the regular grays. So you gotta stick it through the one big mouth and down through the small mouth and through the other mouth and reach down in and grab it. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't have some alien queen wielding a ring or something? Nope. No aliens take over the ring power. But the whole time they're on the planet, they're surrounded by the power of the whatever the green power is that the Green Lanterns have because you had that green Green Lantern shield that sits over the planet, which I don't understand why that one... That, that was still working? Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I don't understand why that was still in place, even though I'm assuming it was still in place because they show a picture when that's, the ship's crashing and it's got that green glow around it. So, so And what was powering that thing? Because the main power battery gets destroyed. Right. He didn't have no power battery or anything. I don't know how he was powering his ring. When they found him, he was basically done with everything and just kicking back and just waiting for something. And then this happens. So. You know, I'm trying to remember what the deal was with with his um, because he didn't have the same 24 hour charge it up limitation. Yeah, he had a problem with the, uh, the hour period. He was on that. They went to the planet and he didn't take nothing with him for a recharge. So, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I can't remember what the rules were on on uh, Kyle Rayner's ring. It was it was different than all the others. That everything changes to adapt to the new generations. Um, I do want to say that I just found out that on this day in 1955, that Sam and Friends made its debut, which introduced Kermit the Frog meaning it's his 65th anniversary to our fearless froggy leader and uh, the Muppets uh, account. And I'm sorry, is that Sam and friends or Happy Sam? Happy anniversary, camera. Uh, Sam and friends. Okay, not, not Sam and friends. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what's kind of cool is that uh, Kermit the Frog is here right now. How is it going, everybody? Uh is the club over? Are we talking comics yet? Hi ho, Kermit! Hi ho! Yay! <laughs> this is the wholesome content I've been waiting for. Oh, geez. Do you happen to know a song by chance? Maybe a oh, song? Me? Yeah, I know a couple songs. What song do you want me to sing? I oh. don't. I don't want to hear you sing. Oh, you need no connection. I want Kermit to sing me a song about a color. Hmm. Um, let me see if I can think of one. Why are there so many? Song about rainbows. Oh, wait, that's many, song colors. that's many colors. Want one color or many colors? It's not easy being green, is it? Uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm out of here. Now, I I, I want to hear some some explicit rating content coming from the frog. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> what are you and Scooter? <laughs> Damn you, Kermit. Hey. So, uh, uh, what else are we talking about? <laughs> Hey, Kermit, I heard a rumor that there's going to be a new Muppets show in July. Are you going to be on that? A new Muppet show? Yay! Yeah, it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. I'm really excited. Are you? Uh, I, 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 I don't think anyone told me. I, I wonder if my uh, nephew Robin has taken over. Are they oh, okay. Yeah, maybe that's it. Oh, yeah. Get somebody else who wasn't in the Robin 80th uh, anniversary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that my pal Elmo has a talk show coming out, too? Oh, no. Tell me about that. Yeah, he's got a late night talk show. I think it's called uh, Not Too Late with Elmo or something. It's going to be on HBO Max. My goodness. Wow. Elmo is moving up in the world. This is on HBO. I'm so proud of him. This is on HBO. I hope oh. it's real sexy. 
<laughs> wow, I, I, um, I, I guess Elmo really has grown up with all of us, hasn't he? Yep, he's bringing sexy back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, where's Jim? So, um, I mean, <laughs> I, does he have any soup? <laughs> Uh, well, it's the one the, the one guy who pers, prefers when there's a fly in his soup <laughs> you ever try it <laughs> just the impossible burger <laughs> that may have had some flies in it when you had that yeah, I'll, I'll still eat burgers, but I don't get any bacon on it. Okay. I was, I was going to say, Kermit prefers to eat the hamburger. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Kermit prefer Sarah Michelle Geller or Miss Piggy? Uh, is, uh, is Piggy watching right now? I don't <laughs> see her anywhere. Uh, well, don't tell her, but uh, I'm a really big fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, Piggy was supposed to uh, get that role, but uh, due to a filming obligation with Muppets from Space, she couldn't participate. Did she participate in Boofy the Vampire Lair? Um, yeah, I know there was a comic around here somewhere like that. Um, I mean, I, I don't know anything about that, no. <laughs> <laughs> why are you Why are you off to the side? What? Why are you off to the side? <laughs> so, um, D and D tonight, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll it'll be great to have Kermit on YouTube again. Um, I think the last time I watched Kermit the Frog on YouTube was uh, when he did his version of uh, Hurt. You know. Uh, oh yeah, I did that. I think. <laughs> right. I, I do so many things I forget. You, Go ahead. If you put this on YouTube, you have to pay royalties. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my anniversary, so I think it's okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Disney will mind. They don't care what you do with their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> They're a pretty laid back company. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, where's D and D on? Aren't are they on a different channel or something? That's it. The, the Dungeon and Dragons, do they do it on a different channel or what? I never see any advertisements for their D&D &D group up or is it just a private no, thing? Or? No, no, they don't film it or whatever. They're just play because they can't all get together um, in person. They do an online thing. There is some, there's some site where they can create their, their map and show where the characters are and stuff like that on there. And that's, that's about all they do. Uh, I, this would be the perfect opportunity for them to start doing uh, something where they're recording it and, and everything else because they're all on there. But um, I, I think they've had so many issues with getting things together and getting it going and everything else that uh, they haven't really thought about that. I can't wear hats anymore. Oh, your head's they don't fit my head. Head's too big. <laughs> hey, can you tell it's us in the tadpole. Can you tell us apart? Oh, my God. That is such a beautiful image. Uh, Kermit, I was wondering if you'd met Baby Yoda yet. Oh, oh goodness. Well, Kermit, be careful, because I hear that Baby Yoda, he likes to eat frogs with his soup. Oh, but I'm sure he wouldn't eat you. Just well, that, He's a baby. He doesn't know any better yet. Just watch out, okay? I'll, I'll, uh, social distancing. <laughs> good idea, Kermit. Very good idea. I'd be really upset if you got coronavirus. Like, I would cry. I would, I would cry and around. I'd come to your house and like wave at you through the window till you got better. So like, yeah, social distance is a good idea. Hello, I'm Kermit the Frog and I'm here to talk about coronavirus. It sucks. <laughs> you know, there, there's a little rumor going around that, that baby Yoda there is actually the illegitimate child of Kermit the Frog and one of the gremlins. Um, um, yeah, no comment. <laughs> There was only like one girl gremlin, so. 
But um, yeah, we, uh, when you're talking about, uh, yeah, I met Baby Yoda way before uh, everybody else did because uh, John Favreau invited me to the set and we had a little Disney exclusive party because we get together for all, all those kind of things. So uh, yeah, he had he got his own limo and everything. So, you know, we, we did meet. Uh, I just had to keep my mouth shut because they didn't want spoilers. <laughs> oh, Kermit, that sounds like so much fun. I am, I'm really happy to hear you guys already that's that's really nice and i thought that's a really nice thing of john to do for you guys i'm glad i think you'll be really good friends oh yeah yeah I, i'm i don't know if john wants me to say this but i'm gonna be in uh the mandalorian season two. Oh <laughs> that's my goodness the, that's gonna be the best i'm playing a guy named robert fett <laughs> oh okay robert uh, that's an interesting name um yeah. What yeah, does he do? I, he sounds like someone who works in an office. He works in a space the, office, right? Do they call yeah, you Bobby? Yeah. Bobby Fett? Oh uh, well, I, I really shouldn't be I mean, none of this is being recorded, right? Because right? No, no, no. Yeah. Oh lips are sealed. Okay, that's good. And then I can tell you everything. Uh you know, Darth Vader comes back and uh you see Kylo Ren being born and uh you know, you you, you see Luke Skywalker who is uh um he is played by uh, Harrison Ford in Mandalorian Season 3. It's a real shake-up, but it, it's really good. As long as you get to kill Kylo <laughs> this Ren. That's fantastic. I can't wait to watch that show. Hey, what, what this about, is going to be the best ever. What about Kylo Ren? Uh, hopefully you're on there to take Kylo Ren out. Uh, out on a date? Yeah, I mean, he's. I saw his marriage story movie on Netflix, and I mean, I saw how that worked out, so I'm not sure if I'm uh, ready to date with him, but, uh, you know. Oh, maybe. no, more like a well, go back. I'm baby, baby Hitler thing. <laughs> so Kermit, go back yeah. to your anniversary here. You know. Yes, yes, um, yes. So, so this is your your what anniversary is this now? It's the 65th anniversary of me on television. Okay, so uh, in 65 years, I guess what we're all wondering is, how many hands have you had in your butt? Uh, I would say at least three or four. I mean, professional hands. Is that what we're talking about? Professional? Yeah. Um, so you paid people to do it? Uh, uh, this isn't being recorded, right? I just want to make sure. Hey, there's a child here in the room. <laughs> no further questions, your answer, or your honor. <laughs> Well, technically, Baby Yoda is 50 years old, so he's not quite as, um, he hasn't been on TV quite as long as you have, but he's not as little as he seems. He's yeah, just cute. I've been teaching him everything I, uh, I know, and uh, so when he was on the set for the first time, that's why they brought me in originally, because, uh, you know, being, you know, working green against the green screen sometimes is very difficult. So uh, I'm a master at it because you don't want, you know, your body to disappear. And while they want to do a lot of practical effects and stuff, you still got to use green screen for some things. So uh, they, they figure they, they brought me in as uh, one of the best green screen actors, uh, me and uh, Zoe Zeldana. Because she was green too. Wow, that's, yeah, that's true. She was. That's incredible. I am learning so much now about The Mandalorian and all, all of your work on it. You know, Baby Yoda is so fortunate to have you as a mentor, and it was really very generous of you to do that, Kermit. Thank you. I, I feel my already great respect for you growing. Oh, well, you're welcome. Huh? Thank you. Uh, Any other questions? While we could continue this all night long. Oh. I just want to know how... He Kermit can hear, and Baby Yoda can't talk. Baby Yoda's got big ears. You got no ears. You got a big mouth. He's got a little mouth. <laughs> well, we kind of have, uh, what's that uh, magician team? Um, Penn and Teller? We're kind of like the Penn and Teller of green puppets. So he does sign language for you. Uh, David, you, uh, you, were you going to say we had to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's about that time we we're uh, we're running a little over. Okay, well, I have a big uh, anniversary dinner with Piggy, anyways, and uh, yeah, so I better get going and put on my uh, best tux. Okay, well, we'd love to have you back uh, sometime. Okay, no way. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, baby Yoda.
Uh, oh, you guys have a good one. Yep. You too. Yeah. Bye. Right. Bye, everybody. Love you. Take care. Have a good one. Have a good weekend. I feel like you really jumped the frog. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> right. Love you. Bye. Yeah. Bye.